The 6.5 is on the road at AWS reInvent 2023 here in Las Vegas. We're having some incredible interviews with key leaders of companies. And Daniel, it's great to see it. You know, it really is a village of, of opportunity and, and innovation uh, out there that comes together here at, at the show. And we've just had, we've had some incredible conversations and I'm super excited about this one. Yeah, I actually just uh, made a full cross uh, <laughs> AWS reInvent sprint from the expo. Yes. And let me tell you, it is probably the most jam-packed part of AWS reInvent that I've seen so far. So, you know, going booth to booth, and this isn't just, you know, the mega booths. This is, there's small innovators, there's SI and partners, there's, you know, data intelligence companies, you know, the ecosystem around AWS, Pat, is telling a story. And that story is that it takes a village. Yeah, it does. And and the future is hybrid, even though I've been, you know, yelling this from the uh, the mountaintops. And I think a lot of people have listened. And I, I do do victory laps these days. But, you know, 10 years ago, we had this, everything was going to be in the public cloud. And, and then everybody's like, okay, it's a little bit harder. And maybe the pay, pay, payback is not... Uh, exactly uh, where it, it needs to be. And one of the companies who uh, has embraced hybrid, uh, you know, bring the cloud, uh, bring the cloud to you, bring the cloud to me, uh, you know, is HPE. Oh, yeah. And they have a, a huge event uh, that unfortunately we can't be at personally, but one key element of HPE strategy uh, is, is, is ITOM. And one of the companies who really brought that to the forefront that was acquired uh, by HPE was OpsRamp. And I'm very pleased to introduce OpsRamp, co-founder, now part of HP. Welcome to the 6.5 for the first time. And I, I know, Varma, you are get, about to get on a plane uh, to, to go to the event. Great Thank to, you. Great to see you. Great to have me here. Thank you very much for um, bringing me on to the 6.5 yeah. media. It's great to have you here. Uh, we've had many of your, your peers, colleagues. Uh, Antonio's uh, been with us a number of different times. Um, always enjoy the conversation. And by the way, you know, kind of bring the talent to us, yes. you know, as we like to say, because, you know, we couldn't be out in, in, in Barcelona with you. Uh, but we are definitely keeping tabs from afar. Um, before we dive in and talk a little bit about kind of the, you know, the event, the all in on hybrid thing, Give us a little bit. I love a good founder story. You were a co-founder. Yes. You were part and of And serial the... entrepreneur too. Wonderful. I love it. But he's still here. I know. Always is indicative. So that tells a story, by the way. Um, give us a little bit of the background, the run-up, what you were working on and, and, and what caught the apple of the HPEI. So um, if you look at uh, OpsRamp Foundation days from the day one of uh, the company when we started, the vision behind us is that the world of IT is becoming more and more complex and federated. Right. Infrastructure, which used to be in on-prem data centers, is getting federated to, you know, hybrid and multi-cloud. Yes. And the people to manage that infrastructure used to be central IT. It's no longer central IT anymore. It is a combination of DevOps, SRE, IT ops, all of them participating into an intro, in, into an, a, a cohesive ecosystem to make applications delivered to their business units. Right. If you look at that complexity and the legacy IT management systems when we started OpsRamp, they were all built 20, 25 years ago when the infrastructure was on-prem Central IT used to do everything that needs to be done. Monolithic applications, everything is on, on that server, okay. yes. So we saw a unique opportunity to build a modern operations management stack, which by design, from the day of the foundation of the company, hybrid is going to be there for a long time to come. Right. Central IT is mo moving more and more into a service provider model to give visibility of what they are doing and what they're providing to the lines of business. And the application and infrastructures are more dynamic than ever before. So that is the foundation to build OpsRamp. And, and that really resulted in building a modern observability, hybrid observability stack from edge to cloud, delivered as a service 
is is the is the foundation of OpsRAM. Yeah. Um, so HP has been all in on hybrid. Uh, I mean, it was the, I mean, some of the statements that H, HPE made, many times they're, they're, they're first with, with what they predict. I mean, they talked about the edge and the importance of the edge and boom, the edge uh, is, is very important. The idea of this on-prem cloud that doesn't ignore the reality of the public cloud or a public sovereign cloud or another sovereign cloud through an acquisition uh, I'm, I'm, I'm interested in your thinking, right? Newly brought into HPE. When you look at, at how HPE uh, uh, arrived at that, is, is it similar to the, to the thought process with, with OpsRamp? Uh, just wanted to get your take on that, on the overall HPE hybrid strategy and, and, and your thoughts on, on, on them getting there. I think if you look at HPE from the you know time that Ant Antonio has been preaching this for the last seven, eight years, right, you know, saying that edge to cloud right. delivered as a service. The whole brand of GreenLake got established to deliver this hybrid experience for the enterprises. And in, in that journey, edge is playing a major role, right? Edge is becoming more and more intelligent. If you look at the new uh, edge infrastructures, you know, retails and retail locations, right. they're bringing more and more intelligent applications that gets delivered from the edge, all the way from cloud hybrid to the edge. So HP endorsed this edge to cloud delivered as a service and the vision behind the one platform to drive with GreenLake platform is to be able to kind of make enterprises consume the infrastructure wherever it is in meaningful ways that they can deliver at the end customers' needs, right? right? And business units' needs. And that's very, very, uh, you know, probably unique in some ways compared to most other large OEMs because there are assets in HPE that gives edge, that gives hybrid, that can also burst into cloud. Right. So, and, and that unique GreenLake platform will bring right workloads to the right needs for the end, end, end customers to consume. As a service. As a service. <laughs> Which is a competitive moat, but it's also sort of a proclamation that's being made by many across the industry right now. And so I agree with you, by the way, it was uh, I think both our firms, but we were definitely working very closely with, with HPE early because we saw what they were trying to do and understood it and were while well, a lot of you know, analyst firms, to your point, uh, and pundits were saying, oh, it's all going to public. We were like, mm -mm. what GreenLake was doing from the earliest days, and even when it was point net or next point, there was next, right? Yeah, the, before they kind of fully GreenLaked everything, it was there. People want to consume things like the cloud, but they don't necessarily want everything in the cloud. And I mean, that was really the original ethos right. of the whole thing. But now it's matured. I would say the hyperscalers have come towards it. You've, you know, at HPE and, and, and your, your peers have gone more towards the public and you're kind of all converging. So differentiation becomes really important. Um, building a, a new moat. I guess uh, I see hybrid by design is something we hear. Um, how are you evolving the way you're kind of telling the story to continue to be differentiated and to continue to help your customers get hybrid by design? I think if you look at uh, the differentiation in terms of what OpsRamp and HPE, you know, bringing through GreenLake platform is to be able to give visibility wherever the workloads are, right? You know, the first order of priority is giving visibility between edge to cloud, the entire stack, giving that visibility. Second one is observability to be able to kind of give what needs to be done to kind of make those workloads deliver, you know, the performance and availability and capacity that is needed for business units to consume. The third element of that is automation, right? And being able to kind of really give the, the framework that allows the edge to cloud delivered in an, in an automated way to the end, end consumer of the IT. So all of that is plays a core differentiation in delivering that edge to cloud as a service. So what OpsRamp bring, is bringing to GreenLake platform and, and HPE's GreenLake strategy is the differentiation of being able to kind of give multi-vendor, right. multi-cloud with 
2,500 plus integrations that OpsRamp brings, that, that ability to give that edge to cloud delivered as a service in a very unique differentiated manner. Yeah, I mean, let's, let's hit the differentiation point. I know you do more, more than observability. Observability is a key, key linchpin uh, in that and, and the um, auto operations automagically uh, with switches and, and being able to go in and figure, not only figure out what's going on, but also to automatically make changes uh, and adjust. And uh, how, how, how are you differentiated versus let, let's say some of the other players out there uh, in, in ITOM. And I know ITOM is more than observability, uh, but how about differentiation uh, versus uh, some of the observability folks that, you know, I've seen it, we've seen acquisitions going on. I mean, it, it is a, a lot of things going on in this market. And quite frankly, congratulations on your acquisition Thank you. uh, as, as part of uh, that, that whole wave. No, I think two pieces of the puzzle, right? If you look at enterprise tool stack today, they're siloed, right? You have cloud, cloud native environments, which is getting tooled with whatever observability stacks that are needed. The hybrid on-prem infrastructures have their own legacy tool stacks that sits in that environment. Then there are tools that are coming, you know, to do some alert correlation and bring right. in the alerts from cloud and, you know, on-prem to kind of create a stack on, on, on top of the layer. The uniqueness you know, that we bring to the table is not just add one more to, tool to the tool stack, but bring yeah. a framework that enterprises can consume in a manner that allows them to do integrate to consolidate. Number one, they can modernize their legacy tools. Number two, they can bring visibility to not only hybrid, but multi-cloud environments. Right. Number three, not just HPE, but non-HPE environments also being able to be seen and, and give a framework that allows operations to be automated, right? That is the uniqueness that, that OpsRAM brings, you know, to answer your question, this is not one more tool in the tool stack. Right. This is a framework for enterprises to really modernize their operations, allow them to consume multi and hybrid cloud environments in a way that makes sense for them, and, and deliver business services that they need to deliver to the lines of business. Now, I appreciate that. And, and here we are at AWS reInvent. You, you offer that as, as one part of it, uh, doing this through AWS, in addition to other cloud partners and on-prem, sovereign uh, on-prem clouds and the edge as well? Yeah. OpsRamp okay. has uh, complete integrations to all the cloud providers, popular cloud providers, of, of course, AWS being one of the leaders in the hyperscalers. We have deep integrations into AWS stack and, and other, other cloud providers. On the on-prem side, we have deep integrations to not just HPE, but all non-HPE environments. Yeah, I saw and that, that in, the, in the acquisition information. That was, that was really interesting, I thought, because you're one of the only folks who has that. Yeah, I think you know, it is important because you know, we recognize no enterprise IT environment is going to be monolithic with one vendor. You have network, you have compute storage, and you have edge infrastructure. There are other vendors who will participate into the ecosystem. Right. You know, that is critical for operations. Well, it is, yeah. and it is the future. And I, I you know, I, I know the the purists dislike this uh, characterization, but it's a hybrid multi-cloud fabric that goes across all of the different places that you're processing data, storing data, uh, moving data. And you have to have some sort of consistent uh, operations and observability across all of that. Otherwise you're standing up, you know, we're back to the days where you had a separate team for mainframe, a separate team for mini computer, a separate team for x86. And, and now we're standing up separate teams for every single cloud. And what IT is really asking for is, hey, give, give me, help me with this madness, right? Give me some consistency so I don't have to create all of these stovepipes. You hit the problem on the head. The siloed operations doesn't give what enterprise needs to give to really act as a service provider to the lines of business. So for them, the unification and simplification is uh, super critical as they endorse this hybrid cloud journey and uh, the uniqueness of 
what we bring with this partnership with HPE, you know, to give it to the enterprise CIOs is an, a, an ability for them to give visibility and automation framework for delivering operations across hybrid multi-cloud. For a dare I ask how we made it through the whole conversation, you never talked about AI. <laughs> um, it's It's been tough these days, right? Well, I do want to ask though, in your space, you know, obviously HPE has a pretty bold and broad AI story, but in, in the part that you're kind of paying attention to and leading, how is AI shifting the pace? I mean, we're seeing obviously observability grow, but isn't AI gonna supersize, super speed, you know, revolutionize this very quickly? I'm glad if you asked this question because <laughs> I think, you know, if you look at the complexity of observability data, you know, gone are the days where you bring alerts and somehow make a signature out of those alerts to determine the level one talent to be optimized by doing alert correlation. That's where the world of AI applied two, three years ago right. for alert correlation. The so-called AI ops companies, they process those alerts and provide a meaningful signal out of those alert signals. But today, with the complexity of observability data where it is metrics, it is logs, it is traces, it is topology information, it is synthetics, end user performance, uh, application performance data, all of that needs to be ingested and really figure out what the probable root cause for that is. And this is where AI machine learning large language models are applied to determine that probable root cause. And that's what OpsRamp is doing with our you know, AI journey to kind of say, and we are very unique from that perspective because we have discovery topology information, observability information, and automation framework to be able to do much more than any AI machine learning on a point tool siloed solutions that are out there. And our probable root cause driven AI framework is already out and you know we are delivering these solutions today to the market. Yeah, well, what's clear is that uh, you know generative AI may be the buzzword, but from a a, a say do ratio, I think you know we're, we're talking as an industry ninety five percent and doing about five percent, uh, and understand that you know. I mean, most of all of tech is not about an or, sorry, it, it, it's an and, right? We still do analytics, even though we have machine learning. We still do machine learning, even though we have deep learning. And now we have generative AI, and we're going to keep doing all. If, if any uniqueness around generative AI capabilities in your, in your world that, that you see? Is it bringing disparate, bigger data together? Is it finding... You know, is it, is, it, is, it, is it making life easier for some of the things you might do in the future? Absolutely, the answer is to both yes, right? You know, being able to kind of ingest such large volumes of data and finding the needle in the haystack just for saying that this is the root cause yeah. is one piece of the puzzle, but doing it in a, in a way where in natural language, you know, hey, the root cause for this is because of ABC not being able to deliver is where the language models can be applied and meaningfully, and right. you know, a DevOps person doesn't want to be woken up every night with a lot of page pagers, right? You know that that job of paging on every alert is gone. That's not what the developer wants to focus on: writing intelligent code right. that solves right. the problem, not in the ops. You know, though it is called DevOps, he wants to be a <laughs> developer. He doesn't want to be an ops person. Wants to be the dev. Yeah. What can Technologies like, you know, with large language models really provide the operations framework to be streamlined so that the developer can focus on development, not on the ops, is where I think these two answers yeah. to your question on where the large language models and generative AI can take. Right. Makes sense. Where so many of the technologies end up going is about freeing the most creative, the most unique skill sets to be in focus and those things that can be those mundane, those repetitive, we're still doing that. And generative AI is just accelerating it. But uh, Varma, I know you got a plane to catch. Um, very excited to hear and see what comes out of HPE Discover this year. So we'll be watching. I want to thank you so much for joining us here on the 6.5. Thank you for having me. Appreciate uh, you both uh, taking a few minutes from your schedules to kind of have me.
Absolutely. Let's have you back again soon. All right, everybody, hit that subscribe button. Join us here in the 6.5 Media Lounge for all of our coverage. And of course, just hit that subscribe button and catch all of Patrick and I's interviews and of course our weekly show. For this episode, though, we got to say goodbye. We'll see you all later.